Do you remember the joke about the planet Earth being just a student alien's homework lying around in the corner of his room with a C- grade? Or that alien civilizations have not visited us yet because humanity has screwed up so badly that the little green men decided not to come? Given the most recent years of life on planet Earth, such an explanation would be quite reasonable. However, what if the real reason we've not yet encountered alien civilizations Civilizations is that they've not yet emerged, and humanity is the first in this frame of reference. In their study, if loud aliens explain human earliness, quiet aliens are also rare. Scientists Robin Hansen, Daniel Martin, Calvin McCarter, and Jonathan Paulson explore in detail the thesis that we, as humanity, appeared very early in the history of civilizations that emerge in the universe. Are we really alone in the Milky Way? Given the current knowledge about exoplanets, it's essential to note that although the Earth may be considered an unusual type of planet, it's not so rare, so it cannot be ruled out that other types of planets cannot give rise to intelligent life. Before we turn to the study mentioned above, let's go back to 1983. It was then that theoretical physicist Brandon Carter investigated how likely the emergence of intelligent life on Earth was. Given the time constraints, Carter modeled this as a difficult challenge. This means that some of the essential steps, such as the development of eukaryotes in the evolutionary process leading to the ultimate emergence of intelligent life, would have been hard, in the sense of being against the odds in the available time, so that there unlikely to have been achieved in most of the Earth-like planets that may one day be discovered in nearby extrasolar systems. Summing up Carter's calculations, we can say the following. To reach the level of our technological civilization, we must go through six challenging steps. Biogenesis, the evolution of bacteria, eukaryotes, hombogenesis, or sex, metazoans, and intelligence. Carter made this conclusion based on the amount of time it took for our evolution. So, back to the article. If loud aliens explain human earliness, quiet aliens are also rare. In the first part of the essay, the authors divide aliens into two types, loud and quiet. The loud ones are those alien life forms that expand rapidly, live for a long time, and change their volume significantly. That's why they can also be called expansive. Quiet aliens do not meet at least one of these criteria. Since quiet aliens are harder to see, we are forced to accept uncertain estimates of their density, while loud aliens, on the contrary, are much more visible given that they exist in significant density. That's why further on, the article focuses more on the loud aliens and gives the following models for them. 1. Number of difficult steps required for the origin of an alien life form. 2. Speed of transformation of a quiet alien into a loud, that is, visible one. 3. Speed of expansion of civilization. As noted by scientist David Moore, civilization emerges in their models. At some point, it turns into an expansive civilization and spreads until it encounters a neighbor where it stops. Further civilizations are prevented to a controlled extent. Given a typical cycle with parameters that cause them to be invisible to us, it turns out the expansive civilizations currently control 40 to 50 percent of the universe, and they'll end up controlling about a million galaxies when we meet one of them in 200 million years. The speed of light reveals this paradoxical result. If expansive civilizations now control 40 to 50 percent of the universe, why hasn't the electromagnetic radiation from their distant galaxies reached us yet? Through these models, given in the article by Robin Hansen, Daniel Martin, Calvin McCarter, and Jonathan Polson, it's possible to deduce the thesis of the early emergence of humankind because the hard step model, which Carter derived, contains two main parameters. The number of steps and the time for which they must be completed. 
By varying these parameters, Henson and others have shown that if we assume at least two hard steps and take into account the constraints on the habitability of planets, the only way to explain the absence of civilizations visible to us is to assume that we appeared very early in the history of civilizations emerging in the universe. So, it turns out, referring to this theory, we have the status of the first civilization in the universe. It sounds quite responsible, doesn't it? Especially for a planet where bananas are sometimes individually wrapped in cellophane film. According to the Kardashev scale, proposed by Nikolai Kardashev in 1964 and is a classification of types of civilizations by the level of energy consumption, humanity is only approaching the first type of civilization. A Type 1 civilization, also known as a planetary civilization, is characterized by the ability to use all the energy of its home planet, such as solar, air, etc., as well as all the energy it can produce – thermal, hydro, wind. Kardashev called this type a technical level close to the one currently achieved on Earth. Physicist Michio Kaku believes that by reaching Type 1, our civilization will be able to control earthquakes, volcanoes, and weather. The problems of global warming will disappear, and life in the underwater world will no longer be a fantasy from Aquaman, but a tangible reality in which people will be able to live in ocean cities. Kaku believes it'll take us another 100 to 200 years to achieve Type 1 status. So, what's next? A Type 2 civilization begins its journey in outer space. Its main characteristic is the use of energy from the Sun and other planets. This will raise humanity to the level of interplanetary civilization, which will be able to use the total energy potential of this star and make us a civilization of the second type. However, we're still far from using Saturn's rings as space windmills or Mars as a potato plantation. Humanity will still need about a thousand to two thousand years for such a leap, but it's still not as long as for Type 3. After all, the Type 3 civilization itself has an entirely different level of evolution. To reach this level, humanity probably needs a hundred thousand years or more. Kardashev considered a Type 3 civilization a civilization that has energy on the scale of its own galaxy. That is, until humanity receives the energy of the whole galaxy, we get no chance to have the status of a Civilization 3. But given the years of evolution that occurred in Type 2, by the time of reaching Type 3, humans will already be a mixture of biological and cybernetic beings. So don't worry, you definitely won't see this stage. Kardashev stopped his theory on three types, but prognosticators of that time assumed that if the humanity of Type 4 would be able to use the energy of the whole universe, then Type 5 would function similarly, only at the level of the multiverse, attracting energy from several universes. Does Type 6 exist then? This model is difficult to try in humanity because then the beings inhabiting the universe would be practically gods, able to control time and space, creating universes with just one snap of their fingers. And what about the seventh one? At present, scientists can't even imagine it. Returning to reality, humanity is only on its way to Type 1 now. The possibility of using solar panels and wind energy is quite real, but so far, people have not been responsible enough for the problems of ecology and global warming. So who knows, maybe we will still live in underwater cities. However, not of our own free will, but repeating the fate of the inhabitants of Atlantis. But it's a different ballgame.